Bulaginaka, my name is Lekia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tabua. We love Today FM in Tabua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tawenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Hola, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news, the Kanoto sentenced to 20 years as Judge Branzi's crime heinous. Cocaine importing lands Hurtado jail sentence. And law reports to help judiciary make improved decisions. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. Jezreel Line of Judah prayer group leader Chone Dokanuto has been sentenced to 20 years imprisonment by Suva High Court Judge Justice Salesi Temo. Justice Temo described 55-year-old Dokanuto as a wolf in sheep's clothing while sentencing him in front of a huge crowd that gathered in court and says this should be a lesson to other religious leaders. Shirin Shivan has been following the case. One of Fiji's highest profile rape case has finally come to an end. The Suva High Court heard that Dokanoto formed a church in Tavuni and prayed for the sick at the age of 38. Despite the ministry based on Christian values, the church itself wasn't registered. Dokanoto used John chapter 4 from the Bible to misinterpret the holy water to his spam. He managed to convince young vulnerable girls and raped his first victim at the age of 40. While sentencing Dokanauto, Judge Justice Salesi Temo said rape takes the dignity of a person and rape of a juvenile is even more heinous. The judge said this case is a serious breach of trust as the pastor cunningly used Bible to fulfill his evil deeds. Justice Temo added that in the Itoke community, moral values are followed as a result of teachings from the Bible. But what Dokanauto has done is unthinkable. The judge added that Dokanauto twisted the teachings from the Bible and committed various sexual offenses against his own followers. It's a little after midday and Judge Justice Saleh Sitemo has just sentenced Jezreel Line of Judah Church leader Pastor Chone Dokanauto to 20 years imprisonment. And as you can see, there's a large crowd outside the Suva High Court. They are believed to be the supporters of the church ministry. Some are the relatives and friends of Dokanauto. And let me tell you, these people are not only here for today, but they have been coming to court for the last two weeks for the rape trial. Justice Temo stressed that since the ministry has been in existence, for 17 years, the Kanauto had carefully planned to molest the young girls when they were fully committed to the teaching. Pastor Dokanauto has been convicted of 10 counts of sexual offenses, which includes four counts of rape, one count of attempted rape, and four counts of indecent assault. He raped four women of his church congregation between 2002 and 2015. He is eligible to apply for parole after serving 19 years imprisonment. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. A Colombian national has been sentenced to 13 years and 11 months imprisonment for unlawfully importing 20.5 kilograms of cocaine into Fiji in 2014. 27-year-old Aidan Alec Hurtado was sentenced by Judge Justice Tushara Rajasinghe at the Suva High Court this afternoon. Judge Rajasinghe says Hurtado didn't have any respect for the law when he entered the country three years ago pretending to be a tourist. He's eligible for parole after serving 11 years and 11 months behind bars. He was acquitted in 2015, however an appeal filed by the state was granted before the retrial began this month. Human Rights and Anti-Discrimination Commission Director Ashwin Raj met with the Sadalpa youth leader who was arrested yesterday for an alleged breach of Section 66 and 67 of the Crimes Act. Chope Koroi Suva is alleged, Koroi Savo, sorry, is alleged to have been protesting on the streets of Suva yesterday to commemorate the United Nations International Day against victims of torture. The commission confirms the constitutional rights of Koroi Savo as an arrested and detained person pursuant to Section 13 of the Constitution have been observed. Koroi Savo is in good health, has access to a lawyer, was allowed contact with his immediate family, and was not manhandled at any time by the police. Koroi Savo is currently being interviewed at the CID headquarters in Suva. The Human Rights and Anti-Discrimination Commission will be closely monitoring the progress of the investigation. 
Members of the judiciary can now improve their decision-making abilities in court with access to previous law reports. Chief Justice Anthony Gates says the law reports can strengthen key justice institutions and improve service delivery. Kelly Vathala was at the launch of the reports. <laughs> The Fiji Law Reports 2007 will now enable legal practitioners excel in the business and practice of law and assist the judiciary to function more effectively. Uh, we will now be able to record those cases, for instance, where there's an acceptance of settled law in Fiji, where there's uh, a change in the law of evidence or procedure, reports and see whether the rule of law is indeed uh, existing. We know that in many countries the rule of law is optional in the sense that we apply it when we feel like it, and when we don't feel like it, we don't apply it. Supreme Court Judge Justice Suresh Chandra says these reports will provide important information for transparency and justice. In these uh, law reports, we have included the judgments from the Supreme Court, uh, the judgments of the Court of Appeal, and judgments of the High Court. So it's a very valuable source of information. The Fiji Law Reports 2007 was launched today with the support of the Fiji Access to Justice Project funded by the European Union. The report uh, allows for greater transparency in decision making and the development of legal principles. It will help them to access justice. To make, uh, make, make, it will make their life easier. The Fiji Law Reports 2007 was finalized by the Judicial Department and implemented by the United Nations Development Programme. Kelly Badala, FBC News. Government Member of Parliament Belminder Singh appeared in the Magistrates' Court today. Singh was arrested by FICAC officials in Suva this morning after a bench warrant was issued against him yesterday when he failed to appear. Singh was a complainant in a case whereby a man was charged for one count of official bribery. He gave evidence in court today. Still to come, Tavua bans catching of Kambathia fish. And Lombasa vendors receive financial literacy details after the break. Nimbula Vinaka, Naya Vanguma, and Dimual Rada Ranalika, or Tikungana Town of Singapore, and Dotalisaka and Avarong and Ambula Fan, number two in a series. We are the Rasubuni Kurnabili, Borani Vatskara and Barabinarna, Dotal Takina Varong and Ambula Fan. Number two and serre. Bula! Bula FM, number two and serre. The district of Tavo is banned from catching kambatia within its fishing grounds for the next five months. This comes after the depletion in the stock of kambatia, also known as the thumbprint impra, in its ingolingoli. Ropate Valeme reports. Naturang na tui Tavo ratu na danieli unge unge. With the Turang Nikoro and Turang Matangali of the district of Tavua signed an agreement this morning to seal the ban on harvesting of Kambatia. Instead of reducing the sizes of the catch, we ban it completely because I know as it is here in Fiji, we don't do such things. Catch our fish and throw it back. Ratuna Danieli says they did this for the future generations of Tavua and he thinks they made the right decision. Tavua relies mainly, the villages relies mainly on us, uh, marine life for survival. And we've got to protect that first. WWF Pacific's Coastal Fisheries Officer Laitia Tamata says it is encouraging seeing Tavua take another step in the sustainable management of their depleting marine resources. Uh, five months ban starts now and uh, the monitoring uh, is already established through the trained monitors who are already collecting data. There are five villages in the district of Tavua that have signed the agreement this morning. A person found breaching the agreement will be dealt with the Vanuafers before they are taken to the police. Rapate Valeme, FBC News. 9,750 micro and small enterprises have been assisted by the government since the inception of the Micro and Small and Medium Enterprises Grant Scheme in 2015. This comes to the tune of 9.5 million grants, million dollar grants to assist those businesses. Ropate Valeme has more. Prime Minister Vorenga Manmarama says they will continue to inject money to assist small businesses under the scheme. And government later this week will announce the budget and I'll show you 
that uh, we will continue to fund programs that will benefit our micro and small entrepreneurs. When Marama advised the recipients to use their grants for their intended purposes. We are putting our confidence and trust in you to use this assistance well. We want you to put this money to good use, to either buy what you need to start your own business. FBC caught up with a few grant recipients. I am very humbled by the government grant that was given to us today because this grant will help us enhance our business. An important decision by the government to give us this grant. We were waiting for this for a long time. More than 100 micro and small businesses were presented with their grants today in Nandi and Lotoka. But Marama says government will continue to support the micro, small and medium enterprises. Ropate Valime, FBC News. A majority of market vendors lack the capacity to strengthen their business and attain economic security through better financial education and access financial services. The UNDP, under its continuing market business education, today held a seminar and fair at the market in Lombasa to help address this issue. The Lombasa market caters for about 600 vendors from Monday to Friday and up to about 1,000 in the weekends. Due to the nature of their work, vendors rarely get time to access financial services like banking, microfinance and insurance. Majority of our market vendors are excluded from available services that are, that are given to them uh, for the reasons of distance, the level of income and, and competing priorities or just to let a few information about the financial services. This is round three of the continuing market business education program which is designed to build financial literacy and business competencies of market vendors who have traded for many years and learned business skills only by trial and error. Mainly my market vendors uh, hardly leave their stores to go and uh, uh, seek for these uh, services. Eh? But when they, uh, they brought it in front of where we sell, it's really helped us. It's very easy for us because we don't have to leave our store to receive this assistance, but instead they've made it easier for us to bring the fair to the market. The continuing business education program comes under the Market for Change project of UN Women, which aims to strengthen the economic security, rights and livelihoods of market vendors. You know, market vendors, one thing is about exclusion. They've been experiencing a lot of exclusion. This, this project, Markets for Change, has improved their inclusion in uh, decision making, into training. There was never any training given to market vendors. They've been included. Financial services providers, along with various government departments, were part of the fair today, talking about the importance of financial literacy. Over 100 vendors turned up for the event. Eleanor Turangiviu, FBC News. Up ahead, Jamie will have all the latest from the world of sports, but back with us tonight is Rachel with Business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. Pacific told to keep up with technology change and in growing Fiji energy and transport sector to be developed by green growth. Stay with us. I'm Anare Sarabakuro of Nayabu Wendemburga Telebu. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideaway Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits. We're here at Tano Waterfront, Lotoka. Love listening to Gold FM, only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. back leading business tonight Pacific countries have been called to prioritize information technology internet services and infrastructure to better support tourism and private sector e-commerce needs this has been highlighted by South Pacific tourism organization as the industry moves to rapidly from offline to online services chief executive Chris Cocker says the internet has revolutionized global tourism marketing and product distribution however Pacific tourism industry has failed 
in many aspects to keep pace with the level of technological change. Research indicates that over 80% of leisure travel is now planned on the internet as more than one third of it is done on mobile devices. Research also indicates that in 2012, 44% of holiday ma makers globally booked the travel via the internet and 24% via travel agents. And we have Elizabeth now with the latest from the markets. NACA, looking at our economic calendar for today, the U.S. has released its durable goods order for the month of May. From negative 0.8%, it dropped further to negative 1.1%, which resulted in the Fijian dollar strengthening against the U.S. dollar today. The U.S. dollar strengthened against the yen yesterday as investors await U.S. Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen's speech on Wednesday morning. If Yellen sticks to her positive economic outlook, despite recent weak U.S. economic data, it might give investors an excuse to sell even more yen, weakening the currency further. Meanwhile, UK Prime Minister Theresa May struck a deal with Northern Ireland's Democratic Unionist Party to prop up her minority government. This will peel away one layer of uncertainty for Britain as it negotiates its exit from the European Union. As a result, the pound gained 0.2% against the U.S. dollar and the euro. And that is all from me. Back to you, Rachel. Thanks, Elizabeth. Looking at today's exchange rates, the Fijian dollar strengthened against the Chinese yuan and the American dollar to close at 325 and 47 cents, respectively. As far as regional currencies, the Australian and PNG Kina weakened, closing at 62 cents and 132. As for the New Zealand dollar, it remained steady since yesterday to close at 64 cents. As for the commodities market, oil prices rose, closing at 43.42 a barrel. Gold dropped to close at 1,243 an ounce, and uh, silver followed suit closing at 1661 an ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, the Ministry of Infrastructure and Tourism Transport is collaborating with the Global Green Growth Institute to help develop the energy and transport sector. The ministry says they are currently carrying out a two-day workshop to help enhance the green sector in Fiji and all green growth member countries around the Pacific. Sanyan Mboila reports. The Global Green Growth Institute is supporting the ministry in building its capacity for new technologies and financing mechanisms. Very important as we build our capacity, not only about new technologies, but also how we can uh, access and utilize uh, financing mechanisms. Uh, the workshop will obviously give an opportunity to exchange your experiences and ideas. Global Green Growth Institute Director General Dr. Frank Grisberman says good ideas and proposals will enable funding to flow for infrastructural development. What we work on on GGGI is to try and bring that gap together, try and bridge that gap. Try and build capacity in the ministries, in the organizations that you work for to come up with good bankable projects or to help structure good government programs or financial schemes or, you know, green energy funds like in Vanuatu. The Infrastructure Ministry is working to develop greenhouse infrastructure as part of the government's efforts to help reduce greenhouse emission and to ensure Fiji is more resilient to climate change. Sainiani Mboila, FBC News. And that's your business news this evening. Now to sports, here's Jamie with the latest. Thanks, Rachel. And good evening. Up ahead in sports, local boxers gear up for Friday showdown. This and more coming up. Mirchi FM is hot.
The Pacific Rugby Players Association is planning bigger things to attract membership from more players from Fiji, Samoa and Tonga. This is the association which solely looks after the welfare of the Pacific players during and after their rugby careers. Vaisnil Prasad has more. Professionally in Europe and Japan and the UK and things like that. So um, it's a really uh, different uh, organisation to some of our other colleagues in different countries. We were focused um, in their own countries but we've got players spread all around the world which is which is really positive but also sometimes challenging um, but we're more around the collective representation. What important that uh, players have this association so it uh, looks after the, uh, the welfare of the players. We've been working with them for the last two years. Uh, we're currently reviewing our agreement and uh, we hope to continue that relationship into the future. There'll be no new inclusions in the Flying Fijians camp when the team regroups tomorrow. The confirmation comes from coach John McKee as he prepares his team for the Pacific Nations Cup, which is doubling as a World Cup qualifier. Vashil Prasad reports. I would consider Nicky as, as probably more of a centre for, for the for the next two test matches and, and, and Jimmy will be um, he'll be in, in uh, the fullback spot. We're just trying to build in an environment, a winning environment, and we're trying to uh, build in a, a winning culture too as well. So... Meanwhile, the Vodafone Flying Fijian side has maintained its 10th position on the World Rugby Rankings, which was released today. Despite meeting Scotland 27-22 to last Saturday, there is no movement for the Flying Fijians, but the Scottish side has dropped the place. Scotland changes positions with South Africa, who moved to 5th place, and Samoa has slipped to 15th. The Naita Siri and Naranga rugby clubs have secured their spots in the Skipper Cup semi-finals, while the other two qualifiers will be confirmed after the last round of matches this weekend. Namosi needs a win against Northland on Saturday to secure its spot, while the win of the Suba Nandi clash will also feature in the last four. The last round of matches will be played at 3 p.m. on Saturday. Suva will host Nandi and Namosi will play Northland at Thompson Park in Navua, while Naranga takes on Madhuwata at Lawanga Park in Singatoka. In the lone match on Friday, Malolo plays Naita Siri at 3 p.m. at Lawanga Park. Boxing fans will get a mid-year treat on Friday night when local boxer Ronald Naidu takes on Franco Fraser at the Canada Fiji Southern Boxing Promotion. This is the second time the two fighters will meet. Their first encounter in 2004 ended in a draw. Rohit Deo with the story. Ronald Naidu has lost just once in his last six bouts and looks to continue with his impressive run. I am preparing well for this fight and this month of 30th and it's going to be a good fight. The Nandi boxer says he's aware that his opponent cannot be taken lightly and knows it's going to be a tough one. Uh, he's a good boxer too, I respect him, he's a goal for me, he's an experienced boxer and yeah, it's going to be a tough fight. Another young boxer trying to set a benchmark this week is Rahul Kumar, who will fight Sachin Mudliar. My preparation is good. I've been working hard on this to get this, win this. Trying my best to do it. The promotion will be held at Nandi's Prince Charles Park on Friday, with the program beginning at 5 p.m. Sebastian Singh takes on Junior Farzan Ali in the main bout. Rohit Dev, BC Sports. The Ocean Athletics Association has come on board to support Fasanok with its Olympic Day run this Friday. Ocean Athletics will assist in the running of the event and will provide special bibs that will, help, that will better help identify runners. The event is being organized by 10 different national federations who are encouraging as many people as possible to participate. This is the first time uh, the Olympic Day run will be uh, uh, professionally set up. Oceania is very proud to assist with the uh, bibs that, uh, that the competitors will wear for the Olympic Day run. The Olympic Day run will be held on Friday at Albert Park in Suva and at Churchill Park in Lautoka. In today's Play of the Day segment, we take a look at the NBA Awards where the final chapter of Russell Westbrook's historic season was writ written Monday at the NBA's inaugural awards show as the Oklahoma City Thunder point guard was named the 2016-17 Most Valuable Player. Westbrook, 28, topped the group featuring former teammate James Harden, Kawhi Leonard and LeBron James. That's it from Sports Tonight. Catch weather later on with Kelly and the new media right after the break. 
Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg announces new mission for the world's most popular social media network. Stay with us for the details. Bula, Kero Mai Simatoka, Kero Ndo Tali Taka Navarro Rong on the Radio Fiji One and Domoy Viti. I have a new mission. In new media tonight, Facebook has been in the spotlight for a while now due to things such as fake news. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg says the world's most popular social media network needs to change. And we join Kelly now with the weather. Good evening, let's take a look at the weather. Strong southeasterly winds have brought cloudiness and showers to many parts of Fiji today and you can expect a cold night tonight. Looking at today in the west, it was sunny much of the morning. However, clouds moved during the afternoon. Daytime, daytime temperatures were up around 30 but they'll drop tonight. Eastwards from Peck Harbour to Suva, it was cloudy and cooler than the west with scattered showers and we can expect a few more overnight. And up in Vanombalavu, once again, under partly cloudy skies, Lambasa was the hotspot of the nation at 32, while Savasavu was a cooler 27 with scattered showers. At sea, south east 15 to 20 knots, gusting to 25 in the passage, accompanied by moderate to rough seas. And for the tides, there's a high tide tonight at 9.35 with a low tide tomorrow morning at 3.33. Sunrise will be at 6.37. The forecast for tomorrow calls for generally clouder conditions with a chance of showers in Suva and the hidden paradise. Tomorrow's temperatures will be about the same. Suva looks a tiny bit warmer at 28. Looking ahead to Thursday, not much change and the Friday holiday will be much of the same. And that Jackie is FBC weather for tonight. Thanks so much for that Kelly. On Fiji Pulse today we asked how will you be celebrating the National Sports and Wellness Day public holiday on Friday? I think I'll be enjoying the holiday with my family at home. I will bring my family to come together and sp uh, spend um, a time in uh, Albert Park for National Sports Day. Uh, I think I'll be part of the celebration which will be organized by the Ministry of Youth and Sports in uh, Suva at Albert Park on the 30th of this month. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, powerful mini crossbows that shoot toothpicks are the new must-have accessory for school children across China. However, it seems the new toy has been caught in the crosshairs of concerned parents and school officials. Recapping the main stories, the Kanuto sentenced to 20 years as judge brands his crime heinous. Cocaine importing lands Hurtado jail sentence and law reports to help judiciary make improved decisions. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we are asking, should World Rugby bring more Tier 1 teams for tests against the Flying Fijians? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, today's shot of the day is from the friendly north. Mere Thao Thao sent this shot depicting the sunrise at Wainikoro in Nandongo, Madhuwata. This was taken from Madhuwata Ivake Technical College. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable evening. Bye for now. I have a new mission. 
Ya kuya zao sile tale na burara mai na omani na ronga gitu tale tegi na gitu bines bale na gitu rongo baro na radio fijuan na dumibiti na radio fijuan na dumibiti na bonga ni bnn